the last jailed member of the Russian activist punk group Pussy Riot is now free. Now, CNN's Diana Magne is in the region of Siberia, where the anti-Putin activist Ali Okina was released from prison just hours ago. Let's cross over to her now. And uh, Diana, I understand that you spoke to one of the released members of Pussy Riot. What did she tell you? That's right. I just spoke to Nadia Tolokonikova, who is um, about, or in fact, just walked into the apartment building where she'll be seeing her grandmother again for the first time. And she was very calm, very composed, said that she was in a working mood and that she wanted to keep working now that she knows the sort of prison system. She wants to help people who are still inside. I asked her if she was interested in uh, working together with Mikhail Khodorkovsky, who said something very similar in that press conference that he gave on Sunday about how he'd like to raise global awareness of the Russian penal system and do whatever he could to try and help those inside. And she said, yes, I think that could be a very good relationship. Um, could it be a very good cooperation? And she said also, you know, I really want to spend some time now there with my family. She has a little five-year-old daughter who's still in Moscow, so she hasn't been reunited with her yet. Um, but she seemed very positive uh, and, and, and very sort of enthusiastic about, about continuing with her work and her activism. Um, mm. I also asked her why she thought she'd been released now, why this amnesty, this huge amnesty had been granted by the Russian president. She said she thinks it's no coincidence that it's two months before the Sochi Olympics um, and that, of course, it was a publicity stunt on his behalf, Christine. Uh, so Tolokonikova telling you that she is elated, that she is planning to return to Moscow to short-term be with her family, her husband, her daughter there, but also incredibly is planning to return to activism. Now, just a reminder here, even though that they've been granted amnesty by the Russian president, I mean, they really served out most of their two-year jail term already. They were due to be released just months from now. So, Diana, just give us an idea where they were there in, in jail in Siberia and what that experience was like for them. Well, they were in two separate penal colonies. And in fact, Nadia was about 300 miles from Moscow for most of her time in a penal colony on, in Mordovia, um, which was very, very grim. And on, 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 in September this year, she wrote a letter from there that was a, an open letter actually published in The Guardian talking about the horror of the kind of work that they were put through. You know, they were working 16-hour days. She was sewing uh, police officers' uniforms. Um, they had terrible food, uh, no hide. They were allowed to wash their hair once a week. She talked about it as though it was slave labor. She said one of the inmates was beaten to death. Um, she'd seen a woman try and kill herself um, to try and escape these conditions. Um, and she herself went on two hunger strikes, the last in September. And because this hunger strike weakened her to such an extent, she was then transferred here uh, to Siberia um, to uh, a, a hospital affiliated with the prison system, which is where she spent the last couple of months. And as you say, they were due to be released in two months anyway. So it seems very t for President Putin, um, you know, to grant them this amnesty, seemingly c covering himself in glory, when in any case they had served nearly the full term of this two-year sentence. Uh, as, as had Mikhail Khodorkovsky, he was due to be released in August this year. He's already done 10 years. You know, it is a symbolic gesture, very close to the Olympics, but these people had served their time. And what is interesting is to hear them come out and be just as mm. defiant as they were when they went in, Christine.